The important question comes, after he said, yes, these are my writings, then he was asked once again, do you recant? And Luther's reply is written in history. One of the greatest replies and the greatest changing events in the Christian world. And this is what he said. Unless I am convinced by scripture and plain reason and not by popes and councils who have so often contradicted themselves, my conscience is captive to the word of God. To go against conscience is neither right nor safe. I cannot and I will not recant. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. As soon as he said those words, the entire court erupted with cheers and patting Luther on the back and encouraging him because they thought the opposite was going to happen. But the entire court. And then, as those in charge heard the commotion when the people outside of the church in the street heard Luther's response, they heard a growing chant, Luther, 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 Luther. And guess who's hearing all this? Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, and there's Aleander. Thinking what? We're in a little trouble here. <laughs> we got to get out of town fast. And of course, Luther was in trouble, wasn't he? Frederick knew that Luther would be in trouble, and so Frederick arranged the capture of Martin Luther as he returned to Wittenberg from Worms. And the capture, of course, Luther didn't know anything about this. He thought his end was at hand, and yet it was a group of soldiers that captured him and took him to a place that Frederick instructed, I don't even want to know where you took him. So Frederick, if he was inquired and asked by Charles V, do you know where Luther is, what could he say? Don't know. Matter of fact, Frederick did not know until much later where Luther was. And so they took him to Wurtzburg Castle outside Eisenach. Uh, I know the Alps have been there. Anyone else been there? That's, that's a, it's, it's still there today. Everything they built back in those days are still there today. <laughs> it's amazing. A lot of these things are built, you know, 1200, 1300, these buildings and they're still there today. When you visit there, you get to see what Luther was doing. Here it depicts a picture of him taking advantage of his time now that he was in hiding because his life was at stake. What did he do? He spent the next six months. And here's a picture of the very death that has survived to this day. He spent the next six months translating the New Testament into Greek. I mean into German. It only took him six months. Of course, he knew Latin, he knew Greek, and he knew German. He excelled in the languages, and he translated within just six months the New Testament. The whole story, if you tell the whole story, there was a dark spot on Luther's story. And what was the dark spot? Well, if you tell people that before God, they are just as important as the Pope, and as princes, and as kings are. Then in God's eyes, everyone is what? The same. The peasants got a hold of this. And remember, in that day, the culture of the day, people reacted what? Violently. That was part of, that was part of the culture, and part of the society, that people acted violently. Isn't it great we live in a world today where people no longer do that? And so, the peasant revolt 
And the peasants got a hold of this and they went after all these priests and they went after the church and they went after the princes and they went after anybody who was in power, who was a power authority figure. Luther heard what was happening when he was at Wartburg and he said, I gotta get out of here. And he immediately went to some of these places and what he tell them? You're not Christian, what are you doing? And he tried to tell them not to do this. Do not react violently. That'd be like Daniel, you know, saying, get up your arms and let's go after him. No, no. Luther was not a favor. But there was a dark point in this history. How many people died from the, from the, uh, the revolt? They estimate close to 100,000 people died. And so Luther gets blamed for starting what? Right, yeah. For starting the wars, and he wanted nothing. That's sort of a dark page. And that, that sort of hurt Luther. It certainly hurt his friend Erasmus, who abandoned Luther after that event, because Erasmus was a peace. That's a whole other story. I mean, so many names we could talk about. And I gotta get through. Alright, I've got a few more slides here. Here is a noble event too. Here's a picture of Luther delivering the New Testament in German to Frederick the Wise. And Frederick just loved that. That is an important part of the history story too. It wouldn't be complete on Luther's life without putting this in here. Yes, a former Catholic priest who took vows of never to marry. And here we find Luther now marrying a runaway nun. Yeah. You know why this group of nuns ran away? In Luther's day, if you went in to serve in a nunnery, you expected to go in there and have spiritual lives. No, on Luther's day, if you went to a nunnery, you became the sex slaves of the priests. Very well documented. And that's why they ran away. And of course he marries one of those. Marriage to former nun, Catherine von Bora. And they had six children. Three boys and three girls. The next most significant thing that happens is the Augsburg Confession. After Luther had written and after Luther and that was a good time. When he got married, the heat was off him, but he still was not going to go to Oxford and with the princes. Here you have depicted the princes, all the princes of all the territories of Germany, appearing at the Augsburg Confession. 